Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at some examples for section 8.5 for integration of rational functions by partial fractions. So in previous videos I broke down how to do partial fraction decomposition. So we're going to now introduce that process in terms of integration. So basically there's a whole lot of algebra we need to do before we can actually get to the integration part of this. So when you see an integral in this form, there, there's so many things that you might be thinking about trying, but the best thing to do is partial fraction decomposition. Um, in this case, the denominator is already factored for us. So the format we're going to work with on this example is, and I'm just going to focus again on the integrand. So the format we're going to work with is the fact that each of these factors in the denominator, there's three of them, they're all linear. So first power, first power, first power on x. And so each of those gets their own fraction when we break this apart. And so we have x minus 1 is one denominator, x plus 1 is another, and then x plus 3 is the third. And then whenever your denominator is linear, x to the first power, then your term on top is to the zeroth power. So it's like x to the zero, or just think of that as a constant. And so over here, I'll call this a different letter b, and over here, c. So Technically, this is like x, a times x to the zero, which is a times one, and we don't even write that because you always go one power less in the numerator than what you have in the denominator. All right, now from here, what this equals is our integrand. And so what, the main thing that you do, and I'm just gonna talk about it because we went over it in the previous video, um, is you multiply by the LCD, the least common denominator, and it clears out all the fractions. So I'm gonna just say it and then we'll jump into what happens. In this case, the LCD is x minus one times x plus one times x plus three. So if I multiply this fraction and these fractions by the LCD, well, all of those denom terms in the denominator here are gonna divide out. So the left side of my equal sign is just going to be x squared plus four x plus one. And then on the right side, well, Think of it as a, what's um, gonna do, what's gonna cancel and what's gonna stay. When I multiply the first term by the LCD, all three of these terms, the x minus one will divide out, but I'm gonna be left with the other two factors. So that's gonna give me a times x plus one times x plus three. When I multiply the second fraction times the LCD, the x minus one and the x, minus, uh, x plus three are gonna stay, but the x plus one is gonna divide out with this denominator. So I have plus b times x minus one times x plus three. And then we have the last one plus c, the denominator x plus three is gonna divide out with this x plus three when we multiply the whole uh, equation by it. And what's left is these two factors. So c times x minus one, times x plus one. And so from here, let's start simplifying. A whole lot of algebra is needed here. So I'm gonna focus on the right side. I'm foiling all of these out. There's a lot going on here. So I'm gonna leave the a out front, but this is gonna be times x squared plus four x plus three. Next set of terms. This is gonna be b times x squared. This is gonna be a total of two x and then minus three. Last term, c times, this is gonna be, when you foil this out, the middle terms are gonna go away, x squared minus one. All right, now keep going, distribute the a, b, and c. So this is a times x squared plus four a x plus three a, over here with b, b squared plus two b x minus three b, last terms over here, cx minus c. Okay, so what you're gonna do here, and one of the reasons why we are working with this process is because how we can match this up with the left side. And so what I'm gonna do now is just rearrange. I'm gonna bring every term with an x squared, let me use some other colors here. All the terms with an x squared, I'm gonna bring those together, and they're gonna line up with this x squared on the left, okay? And I'll do that um, lining up in a sep separate step. So we have x squared. I'm still gonna leave my um, other terms here as well for now. On, on the left, plus four x plus one. 
but on the right, see if you can track with me. I'm going to factor out, okay, I'm going to factor out the x squared from these three terms, and I'm going to put it in the back. So x squared from these terms that I underlined in red, so what's left is a plus b plus c. Okay, so from these three terms. Let's go another color and focus on the x terms. So the x terms, terms with a single x, right here and here, and that's going to line up with the 4x eventually. And so I have, I'm going to factor out the x from these two terms, and I'm going to factor it out to the back. So what's left, if I take out the x, this is 4a plus 2b. Let me give myself a little more room. Plus 2b times x. All right, and now let's go on to what's left. What's left is just constants, and so I have just a 3a, that's just a constant, and then a, min a minus 3b, and a minus c, and that's going to line up with this constant. So I'm just going to group those all together. So 3a minus 3b minus c. Okay, so what's happening here is we're matching the left side with the right side, and I've already color coordinated. So this a plus b plus c was the coefficient on x squared. So if you look over here, the coefficient on x squared on the left side of our equal sign is an invisible one. So your first equation in what's going to become a system of equations, I'm going to label it as equation one, is that the coefficient one times x squared equals these coefficients, or this total of a coefficient times this x squared. So one must be the same as a plus b plus c because it's the coefficient in front of x squared. The next equation, let's see, we were using green. The coefficient on x was positive four. So positive four times x. And so over here, the coefficient on positive x plus this value times x, this must match four. So we know that the four in front of x is the same as this quantity in front of x. So four equals four a plus two b. And then our final equation for our system of equations is the fact that this constant one must be all this leftover terms over here that don't have an x or x squared with them. So all of these constants must match with this one over here, they add up to one. So one equals 3a minus 3b minus c. Okay, so this is our setup. All of this process so far was to get to right here so we can find a, b, and c, and then plug it back in to what we had set up to rewrite this integrand. Now, from here, this is a system of equations of three equations, and you have options. You can use elimination, substitution. If you know how to work with matrices, you can set up a matrix, an augmented matrix. I'm gonna go ahead and use elimination. So for elimination, let's just pick one combination of these equations that's gonna be maybe the fastest to work with. And if you look at what you're, you're dealing with here, if I start to eliminate, I'm gonna go with equation one plus equation three, and that's gonna work really well without me doing any extra work to these equations, multiplying them by anything special. And here's why, and I'll, I'll do it all in steps. Equation one was one equals a plus b plus c. If I add equation three, which was one equals three a minus three b minus c, watch what happens. I get two equals, total of four a, a total of negative two b, and the c's are gone. So that's why it's called the elimination method. So one of your variables goes away. And so I'm, I wanna keep track. I'm gonna go ahead and call this another equation, just so I don't lose track. This is equation four. So my goal is, what is A, what is B, what is C? Find A, B, C. So now let's see what we can work with. From here, let's look back at our system. What can we work with um, that has A and B in it? Well, if you look at equation two, it also has A and B in it. So let's combine these. This is really nice. Again, I don't have to do anything extra. And by that, I mean I don't have to like multiply by some coefficient here to change any equations up because watch what happens when I just add. So just to save some writing, I'm gonna add right underneath. I'm gonna say equation four plus equation two. So equation two was four equals four a plus two b. And if this wasn't a positive two b, 
which is gonna add up with a negative 2b to make zero, then I would have had to just multiply this equation by some value to make these go away, to make these add up to zero. So we get six, two plus four, equals eight a, and then these are zero. And so this, we don't even have to call this a new equation because we can just solve right now for a. So if I divide by eight, I get six over eight is a, and let's make that look a little bit better. That's just going to be three fourths for a. And we're a third of the way there because we need to find a, b, and c. So we have a, now let's go back into our system and find b and c. So once you have one of your variables, you start to work backwards and you just say, well, how can I plug this in to find the next variable? And I'm gonna go right into equation two because if I know a, I can find b really fast. So I'm gonna plug into equation two and I know that four equals four times a, which is three fourths, which we just found plus two b. And if you solve this for b, so just divide out the fours, solve for b, you're going to get that b is one half. All right, two thirds of the way done. Let's find c. Last variable, we have a, we have b, Pick any equation with A, B, and C in it. Let's see, I'm just gonna pick number one. And let me move over here. So if I pick equation one, we know that one equals A, which was 3 fourths, plus B, which was 1 half, plus C. So if you just take a moment and you use um, a common denominator, you can solve this equation for C. And when you solve this for C, you end up with negative 1 fourth. 4c. Okay, so all of this algebra to get to these three values for a, b, and c, and we're going to plug them right back in here. And so just to not erase anything just yet, let me go right here and just plug it right in. We know that a is 3 fourths. Okay, we know that b is 1 half and we found out that C was negative one fourth. Okay, so the algebra part is pretty much done. Let's erase this and then we'll work on the integration. Okay, continuing on, now that we know that this is gonna be our new integrand, let's go ahead and write this in integral form again. And I'm gonna simplify, but at the same time break this into three separate integrals, even though it initially was one. So this is gonna be, let's go ahead and factor out that three fourths. So 3 fourths, so our original over here, this is 3 fourths times the integral of 1 over x minus 1 dx. And then I'm going to factor out the 1 half. So this is 1 half times the integral of 1 over x plus 1 dx. And then I am factor out the negative 1 fourth here times the integral 1 over x plus 3 dx. And so from here, what we can do is, um, you can think of it as using u substitution, but you, you kind of can skip it, and here's why. For each of these denominators, if you e call each one of them u, the derivative of each one of them is one. So one dx would be the derivative of each of the denominators. So you don't really need to go through the whole u substitution. Just think of this as one over your argument, and um, the integral of that would be ln of that argument. So jumping right into what these integrals equal. This is 3 fourths, integral of 1 over x minus 1 is ln x minus 1, plus 1 half ln x plus 1, and then minus 1 fourth ln x plus 3 plus c. So there it is. Our answer for this integral here using partial fraction decomposition to break down the integrand and then using just the fact that 1 over this argument the antiderivative is ln of that argument. All right.